There's a location in the Western Sahara Desert of Mauritania called the Rishat Structure. It's also commonly referred to as the Eye of the Sahara. Welcome to Unexpected Animal Habitats, where we show you all the wonders the Sahara offers. Come with us as we explore this vast desert and see what mysteries lie beneath its scorching sand dunes. You won't believe some of the most bizarre objects and occurrences discovered in this enormous land. So hold on tight and grab your camel, it's about to get weird. Let's go for the 20 strangest things found in the Sahara Desert. Number 20. Ancient River Network Under the arid dunes of Mauritania, a massive river network that formerly delivered water for hundreds of kilometers in the Sahara, an ancient river system was discovered beneath the shallow, dusty surface in radar data from a Japanese Earth observation satellite. The river system was presumably winding its way from more than 500 kilometers inland to the ocean. The underground canal might have been a component of the Tamanraset River, which is hypothesized to have formerly flowed over areas of western Sahara from origins in the Ho Highlands and Southern Atlas Mountains in Algeria. The Discovery's French-led team thinks the river delivered water to the sea during the region's recurrent wet periods during the previous 245,000 years. The last time water flowed through the channels could have been 5,000 years ago. The river would have delivered nutrients essential for marine species far into the sea, allowing people, plants, and wildlife to flourish in what is now arid territory. The river system would be the 12th largest on Earth if it was still running today. According to satellite images, the secret river channels nearly lined up with a massive underwater canyon extending off Mauritania's coast into waters more than three kilometers deep. It reveals that the Sahara Desert formerly had a dynamic, robust river system as recently as five to six thousand years ago. Now it's time for the star topic. The lost city has been found in the Sahara. We are about to unfold its mystery. A forgotten city was hidden among the sand and the dunes. A crew arrived at this location for additional research before they were perplexed and fascinated by what they found. The Haid al Jazil in Yemen is a structure that is so far away but startlingly comparable in design to the architecture of this old city. Since it appeared that some powerful culture had somehow managed to travel such vast distances, this gave rise to a lot of speculative discussion among experts. Nobody knew who these people were or why they had erected such magnificent buildings in a remote location thousands of kilometers from their homes. Do you know what this archaeological site used to actually look like? Share your view in the comment section below with the hashtag StarTopic and let us know your opinion in relation to what we just showed on screen. Now with that being said, let's keep things moving. Number 19. Libyan Desert Glass Le Chatelerite dominates the composition of Libyan Desert Glass, also known as the Great Sand Sea Glass. This impactite can be found in the Eastern Sahara, the deserts of Eastern Libya, and the Western deserts of Egypt. Over tens of square kilometers, desert glass fragments can be found. It's unclear where the desert glass came from. Long thought to have meteoritic origins, recent studies link the glass to impact features like zircon disintegration, vaporized quartz, meteoritic metals, and an impact crater. Some geologists predicted that the glass is an extract of the meteoric big aerial bursts radiative melting, which makes it comparable to the trinitite that is derived from sand obtained from nuclear explosion heat radiation. According to dating methods, the Libyan desert glass formed around 29 million years ago during the Pleistocene. It was utilized to manufacture tools similar to obsidian. Since silica is practically pure, the glass must develop at temperatures greater than 1,600 degrees Celsius, hotter above the temperature of any igneous rock found on Earth. A rare high temperature form of quartz called cristobalite and grains of the mineral zircon, most of which have interacted to form the higher temperature mineral zirconia, are the only minerals that have survived whatever triggered the melting. According to theories, the glass may have originated by melting following a meteorite impact or by an airburst from an object burning in the Earth's upper atmosphere. 
Now, as it continues to get hot in the Sahara, kindly click on the subscribe button, quick, before it overheats and melts! Number 18. Nabta Playa, the world's first astronomical site. Massive stone circles were built by prehistoric tribes all over the planet for thousands of years, and they aligned them with the sun and stars to record the seasons. These ancient calendars helped societies track when to grow and harvest crops by predicting the arrival of summer, spring, winter, and fall. They also served as places for celebration and sacrifice during ceremonies. These megaliths, enormous stone monuments from prehistoric times, may seem mysterious today when many people don't have access to or even a view of the stars. Some even claim that they are supernatural or extraterrestrial in origin. However, many prehistoric societies kept time by keeping track of which constellations rose at dusk, much like a huge cosmic clock. Some used the shortest and longest days of the year, as well as the spring and fall equinoxes to determine the sun's precise location in the sky. Around 35,000 megaliths in Europe alone, including several stone circles with astronomical alignments, tombs, or cromleks, and other standing stones. Between 4,500 and 6,000 years ago, these structures sprang up along the Atlantic and Mediterranean coasts. Stonehenge, a monument in England, is the most well-known of these sites and is thought to be at least 5,000 years old. Even though it is quite old now, Stonehenge may have been one of the newest stone buildings ever built in Europe, at least from that time period. Number 17. Wadi al-Hitam, Whale Valley The basic evolution of whales is one of the iconic shifts that characterize the story of life in the desert, and Wadi al-Hitam is the most significant location in the world to illustrate this transformation, the quantity, concentration, and quality of the fossils, as well as their accessibility and location in beautiful and protected terrain, surpass the values of other comparable locations. The remarkable collection of shark teeth, sirenians, and reptiles from the Gehanum Formation, as well as the petrified remains of Archaeoceti primitive whales, mark the transition of cetaceans to marine life. One of the main narratives represented by these fossils is the transition of whales from terrestrial to marine mammals. The best place to witness this evolutionary transition is right here, at this very moment. These whales' shape and way of life throughout their metamorphosis are eloquently portrayed. This is a rare place to find these fossils because they are plentiful, of good quality, concentrated, easy to get to, and in a beautiful protected area. The fossils from Al-Hitam show that the first Archaeocetes were just about to lose their back legs. Thanks to more fossils found at the site, it is possible to figure out what the local ecology and environment were like at the time. Number 16. Giant Prehistoric Crocodile Discovered in Tunisia the fossilized remains of the world's largest ocean-dwelling reptile, a crocodile twice as large as anything that exists today, were discovered on the Saharan border. Machamosaurus rex, or the giant crocodile, measured at least 9.7536 meters in length and weighed over 6,600 pounds. It would have resembled a current crocodile, excluding its size, but for its thin snout, which would have allowed it to swim in the ocean. Around 130 million years ago, Ago, it would have been the top predator in an area separated from Africa and Europe by an ocean. The length of the cranium alone exceeds 1.524 meters. This beast is enormous. The location in Tunisia where the skeleton and some bones were discovered would have been a lagoon facing the ocean and teeming with enormous fish and turtles, all of which were the preferred prey of the Machinomosaurus rex. However, it is said that the animal used to feast on the giant turtles or big fish found in the ocean. He was definitely at the upper part of the food chain because he was huge and strong. The significance of the amazing discovery goes beyond Beyond its size, it's likely it became extinct between the Jurassic and Cretaceous periods some 150 million years ago. Number 15. Holy Grail of Dino Fossils Found in Egypt Mantosaurus Shahine was a dinosaur that weighed around 5 tons and was as long as a school bus. 
Therefore, it is classified with the Titanosauria, a group of dinosaurs that also includes the largest living mammals on Earth. What this find reveals about dinosaur evolution, however, is even more mind-blowing. This species was discovered in Egypt. Most dinosaur bones have been discovered for more than 250 years throughout Europe, North America, and Asia. In Africa, fossils haven't been easy to find and catalog for scientists. Therefore, it is unclear how the dinosaurs evolved in that area. An expedition led by Hesham Salam of the Geology Department at Egypt's Mansoura University found the fossilized remains in the Sahara. The Mansourosaurus possessed bony plates in its epidermis, a long neck, and presumably consumed plants. The Mansourosaurus, according to research, is more closely linked to dinosaurs found in Europe and Asia than it is to those found in South America or even some regions of Southern Africa. As a result, at least some dinosaurs could travel between Africa and Europe. Number 14. British World War II fighter found in the Egyptian desert. A Polish oil worker named Jakob Perka was on an excursion in the Egyptian desert when he came to discover a nearly completely preserved war relic, the fallen Kitty Hawk P-40. This discovery took place seven decades after the plane was shot down. Sergeant Dennis Copping, who was assumed to be the pilot of the aircraft and was 24 years old, is considered to have survived the accident. Copping was part of a fighter unit in Egypt that went to North Africa to fight against against Erwin Rommel. This unit was engaged in combat in North Africa. When the crash happened, he was trying to land the plane safely at a British airbase. It's the airplane's equivalent to Tutankhamun's tomb, a perfect time capsule so it could be fixed. Aside from that, the one-seat plane is amazingly undamaged. It still had guns and ammo inside, even after the Egyptian military removed them for safety reasons. The Royal Air Force Museum in London intends to retrieve the aircraft and put it on exhibit there at some point. However, ever since the unbelievable story gained the attention of outlets worldwide, residents have been looting the location in search of materials and mementos. Number 13. Stone Age Graveyard in Sands of Sahara the incredible archaeological discovery named Gobero, after the Tuareg name for the region and stretching back 10,000 years, was teeming with human and animal skeletons, including big fish and crocodiles. Gobero is tucked away in the barren Teneri Desert of Niger, which Tuareg nomads call a desert within a desert. Some of Soreno's most important paleontological discoveries were made in the Tenera, including the gigantic extinct crocodilian Sok Cosucius, better known as Super Croc, and the dinosaur Nigosaurus, which had 500 teeth and ate plants 110 million years ago. The September 2008 issue of the magazine reports on the discovery of the lakeside burial, which represents two successive human populations separated by more than 1,000 years. The team tiptoed among scores of fossilized human skeletons exposed on an ancient dune field by the scorching Saharan wind as they investigated the location. A little hand reached up through the sand with its finger bones intact and jaw bones on the surface. The location was pristine and undoubtedly unvisited. There were animal bones from species not seen in the desert everywhere you looked. This location is thought to have been a green Sahara. Number 12. The Eye of the Sahara the Blue Eye of the Sahara, commonly called the Richat Structure, or the Guelb Er Richat, is a gigantic bullseye-shaped rock structure in the Sahara Desert. The formation spans a desert area in Mauritania that is 40 kilometers wide. For a long time, very few members of the local tribes knew about the creation. It was first photographed in the 1960s by the Gemini astronauts, who used it as a reference point to track the success of their landing operations. More detailed measurements of the formation's height and width were provided by the Landsat satellite later slammed into the Earth. Later on, the Eye of the Sahara was formerly thought to have been an impact crater formed when a spacecraft slammed into the Earth. But thorough examinations of the rock inside the building reveal that they are entirely of earthly origin. Geologists analyzed that the Eye of the Sahara is certainly a geological dome. The rocks in the formation are at least 100 million years old, and some go back to the beginning of time on Earth. 
In addition to sedimentary layers created by the wind-pushing layers of dust and water depositing sand and mud, these rocks also comprise igneous volcanic deposits. Today, igneous rocks of various sorts such as kimberlite, carbonatites, black basalts like those found on Hawaii's Big Island, and rhyolites can be found near the eye. Number 11. The Hypatia Stone one of the most intense events in the cosmos is a stellar explosion known as a supernova type IA, and the stone Hypatia, discovered in the Saharan Desert in 1992, may represent the first physical proof of such an explosion. Researchers have put together a timeline of Hypatia's genesis extending back to the early phases of the formation of Earth, the Sun, and the other planets in our solar system. After discovering a sequence of highly unique indications in the composition of a small fragment of the show. When a red giant star, a star that was dying, collapsed into a white dwarf star, that is when Hypatia first appeared, stars with medium to high mass. The white dwarf star found itself in a binary system, with a second star orbiting a common center of mass following the collapse that would have occurred inside a massive dust cloud or nebula. The other star was finally eaten by the hungry white dwarf star, eventually bursting into a supernova type IA explosion inside the nebula. Number 10. The Pearl of the Desert, Kadamas. One of the oldest and most well-known Saharan cities is Gadamas, which Arab traditions refer to as the Pearl of the Deserts, as a significant and tranquil hub for caravan trade. As part of the Trans-Saharan Network, it has played a role in the cultural and economic life of the region. The Pearl of the Desert, Gadamas, is situated in an oasis. It is a superb example of a traditional town and one of the oldest pre-Saharan cities, a vertical division of functions distinguishes its domestic architecture. The ground floor stores supplies. The next floor is for the family. Overhanging covered alleys create an almost underground network of passageways, and the top floor is reserved for the women with open-air terraces. The old town of Gadamas is a superb illustration of an urban desert settlement and its architecture, illustrative of the incredible adaptations made by people to survive in a very hostile environment. The community is built around the Ayn al-Faras Spring, situated in the pre-Sahara between the Great Erg San Sea and the Al-Hamada El-Hamra Stone Plateau, locally called Yusuf. The ancient town's circular shape, built-up area, and architectural style were shaped by the local climate and water management, and they are intertwined with the nearby palm groves. The houses' strengthened outside walls shield the urban ensemble. Together, these characteristics lessen the effects of the Irish climate and cater to the unique socio-cultural requirements of the locals. Number 9. Rock Art Sites of Tadrat Akakus Numerous cave paintings from 12,000 BC to 100 AD may have been seen on the rocky mastiff near Tassili Naja in Algeria, another World Heritage Site. They show remarkable changes in flora and fauna and the various lifestyles of the population in this Saharan region before then. Three major eras of occupation, the early Akakus and Pastoral Neolithic, have been identified as sites in this area from approximately 9,810 to 8880 BC, a humid time known as the Early Achaicus was marked by tiny nomadic groups living in valleys and beside lowland lakes. An arid period known as the Lake Achaicus, circa 8870 to 7400 BC, was characterized by sedentary people living in greater groups in valleys. These people dramatically increased the amount of food processing, wild grain storage, and the usage of grain grinding stones and earthenware, increased movement in, once again, a more humid environment, as well as the domestication of animals were hallmarks of the pastoral Neolithic. These individuals utilized fewer grinding stones. Because of the historical significance of the rock art and the area, UNESCO designated it a World Heritage Site in 1985. The paintings span from 12,000 BC to 100 AD and show the evolution of local structure, of local culture and the environment during that time. Number 8. 4.6 million year old chunk of protoplanet landed in the Sahara. 
Less than a year ago, a meteorite was found in the Sahara Desert, and it is possible that this is the oldest example of a crystallized lava in the solar system. Pieces of this space rock, which formed millions of years before Earth did, have much to teach us about the formation and development of planets. A paper describes the characteristics of the meteorite Urgchek 002, which was discovered in the Urgchesh region of the Algerian Sahara in 2020. The meteorite Meteorites found in this area are well known. There were 100 kilograms of meteorites found in 2007. Eric Chesh 002 is 32 kilograms in weight. Meteors are rocks from space that enter Earth's atmosphere and disintegrate upon impact with our planet's atmosphere. Space debris was calculated to be 4.565 billion years old, making it older than the previous record holder by 1 million years and roughly 20 million years older than our planet. This this stone was shaped when the solar system was just only 2 million years old. What we are looking at is a section of a protoplanet's crust. If our theory of planetary formation is true, the gas and dust that encircled the newborn sun developed into pebble-sized objects that collided to form protoplanets. Number 7. The Desert Breath a massive artwork called The Desert Breath is located in the Egyptian desert. DASTR team is the creator of this land art project. Alexander Strato, industrial designer and architect, Stella Constantinides, architect, and Dane Strato, installation artist, formed the team in 1995 to develop this project. Their shared ambition to labor in the desert is the foundation of the endeavor. The desert represented infinity to them in their imagination. They were discussing the desert as a mental condition and mental environment. The conical shape resulting from the sand's natural creation served as a style starting point in the eastern Sahara Desert near the Red Sea in El Gorna, Egypt, Desert Breath covers an area of 100,000 meters squared. To build it, 8,000 meters cubed of sand had to be moved and shaped into precise positive and negative conical volumes. Number 6. Remnant of Vast Ancient Lake in the Sahara Around 7,000 years ago, a massive lake covered hundreds of square kilometers throughout much of Africa's middle and northern parts. At its greatest extent, this lake, which geologists call Lake Megachad, encompassed more than 400,000 square kilometers, making it marginally bigger than the Capsian Sea, which is currently the largest lake on Earth. Evidence of the lake's historical shorelines can still be etched into desert landscapes, even though present Lake Chad has shrunk to barely a fraction of its previous size. These ancient shorelines are hundreds of kilometers from the modern lake's beaches. The elevation data provided by the Shuttle Radar Topography Mission, or SRTM, makes it possible to identify the lake's former shorelines. The places at lower elevations seem darker on the map above. The lake's location in its present form can be seen in a picture captured by the Operational Land Imager, or OLI, aboard Landsat 8. The elevation Elevation data draws attention to sand splits and beach ridges that have developed alongside the northern borders of Lake Megachad. Sand spits are most commonly seen near the shorelines of coves and estuaries. This is because the prevailing winds in these areas produce currents that carry sand and other sediments along the shoreline. Because the winds came from the northeast at the time, at the time of Lake Megachad, and continue to do so today, the split has grown in the direction of the southwest. Number 5. Alone in the Sahara Mauro Prosperi, an Italian police officer and former pentathlete, wanted to challenge his physical limitations in 1994. He had three small children, was married, and was 39 years old. He traveled to Morocco to start the event after a rigorous training period. Even though it now attracts around 1,300 people annually, increasing the feeling of safety in numbers, the 1994 competition apparently only had 134 competitors. Prosperi claimed that, as a result, he traveled alone for the majority of the six-day trip. He took his two liters of water and kept running, as the rule said he had to. Shortly after 1 p.m., strong winds generated an unexpected sandstorm, forcing the race's organizers to call it a day. By the time darkness fell, other participants had weathered the storm and arrived at the fourth checkpoint, but Mauro Prosperi was nowhere to be found. 
After nine days, when he was found, Prosperi claimed that, after hours of backtracking, it was too dark to continue looking for the path signs. At daybreak, he set up camp and started to hunt again, only to discover that his surroundings were utterly foreign. He was virtually out of water and had little food left. Prosperi lost 35 pounds and was only 99 pounds when he was saved. He received 16 liters of intravenous fluids from medical workers after doctors declared his liver had nearly failed. Number 4. World's oldest color was discovered in the Sahara Desert. Scientists believe that they have uncovered the world's oldest hue after smashing rocks that are 1.1 billion years old and were located beneath the Sahara Desert. This color is brilliant pink. The pigments are preserved chlorophyll molecules made by ancient oceanic cyanobacteria. These colors predate all other discoveries by more than 500 million years. The explanation for why larger species did not appear on Earth until much later in its history can be now provided thanks to the discovery of certain previously unknown pigments. Pigments indicate that, while there were plenty of cyanobacteria in the seas, there weren't enough bigger algae to support a more complex ecosystem and larger organisms. Animals and other larger items, like seaweed, didn't develop until roughly 600 million years old. Despite the fact that the Earth is thought to be about 4.6 billion years old, the chemical analysis of the pink substance led the researchers to conclude that it was produced by microscopic cyanobacteria. Number 3. The Saharan Horned Viper Iris North Africa, made up of Morocco, Mauritania, eastward via Libya, Algeria, Niger, Ethiopia, Sudan, and Egypt, through Sinai to the northern Negev, is home to Saharan Horned Vipers. They can be found in Kuwait, Yemen, extreme southwest Saudi Arabia, and sections of Qatar in the Arabian Peninsula. These snakes avoid coarse sand and prefer dry, sandy environments with few rock outcroppings. They can also be discovered near oases. Saharan horned vipers are nocturnal, solitary animals. They hide in holes, behind rocks, abandoned caves, or in the sand during the day to rest. They primarily move by sidewinding, which involves pressing their weight into the ground while leaving whole body imprints in the sand or mud. Although they generally have a calm disposition, these snakes may hiss, assume a C-shaped posture, and rapidly rub their coils together to produce a rasping sound if they feel threatened. The Saharan Horned Viper is an ambush predator that hunts its victim when buried in the sand beneath rocks or concealed by plants. They strike quickly when approached, clinging to the prey until the venom takes effect. These snakes lay 8 to 23 eggs, which hatch after 50 to 80 years of incubation. They are oviparous. In abandoned rodent burrows and under rocks, females typically lay their eggs. The hatchlings are independent of parental care and are 12 to 15 centimeters long. Number 2. The Test Site in the Sahara Desert a radioactive Saharan dust cloud has returned to haunt France due to its colonial past and atomic bomb testing. Winds carrying sand from the Sahara Desert passed through Spain, France, the UK, and Ireland. Some regions of Europe experienced golden sunset skies, in addition to a minor but noticeable increase in radiation, according to ACRO, Association for Control of Radioactivity in the West. This recent plume of mildly, of mildly radioactive dust is closely related to France's colonial heritage and its Cold War-era nuclear bomb tests. French atomic bomb experiments were conducted in parts, in parts of the Sahara Desert, before Algeria's 1962 independence from French colonial rule. Under the name Gerbois Bleu, France did its first nuclear test in the air on February 13, 1960, in the Algerian Sahara, Blue Desert Rat. Subsequently, several underground tests were conducted on French soil. The tests exposed locals to radiation, which is still present in the deserts today, and French soldiers stationed there. This big nuclear bomb test is directly responsible for the recent rise in radiation above France. Scientists took samples of Saharan dust from car windshields and sent them to a lab to be looked at. This proved that cesium-137 exists. Cesium-137 
is a radioactive isotope that is often made when uranium-235 splits apart in nuclear weapons but is not normally found in the sand of the Sahara Desert. Number 1. The Kamil Crater The 45 meters in diameter Kamil Impact Crater was created in the Eastern Sahara, not far from the southern border of contemporary Egypt around 5,000 years ago. Numerous pieces of the meteorite impactor, as well as the original elements of the structure, are still very much intact. All species of Gabel Kamil, the iron meteorite that created the Kamil crater, are explosive fragments weighing 1 gram to 34 kilograms, except one 83 kilogram Ragmagaliptid specimen, an ungrouped axotite with an Ni content of around 20% Wt. Gabel Kamil has an extremely fine grained duplex plesite metal matrix with high Ge and Ga values of around 120 grams and 50 grams respectively. Schreinserite, Troilerite, Daubreilite, and native copper are accessory mineral phrases in Gabel Kamil. Curvilinear shear bands created during the violent terrestrial impact sliced the meteorite fragments crosswide. A thorough investigation of the crater's perimeter found a highly asymmetric distribution of meteorite fragments with higher concentrations in the southeast sector and a broad maximum in meteorite concentration in the 125 to 160 degrees north sector at roughly 200 meters from the crater rim. The density map created in this investigation indicates that the total mass of shrapnel specimens below 10 grams is 3,400 kilograms. Field data show that the iron bolide followed a somewhat oblique trajectory as it neared the Earth's crust from the northwest, 305 to 340 degrees north. The missile was dispersed into thousands of pieces upon hypervelocity collision. The projectile and the quartz arenite target target rocks both experienced some melting along with the shattering and underwent shock metamorphism. One thing is certain. The Sahara never ceases to astound us with its surprises, even though scientists and historians continue to unearth fresh mysteries in its immense expanse. Thank you for viewing, folks. We hope learning about some of the most unusual objects discovered in the Sahara Desert was interesting. Thank you very much for watching, and have a good one.